Sharon Butler has extensive industry experience as an art director in publishing, advertising, and new media, and is also an exhibiting artist. She has received several grants and awards, including a Paula Krasner Foundation grant. Her work is included in private collections in Boston, New York, Los Angeles, London, and Kyoto. I, I wouldn't say there was any epiphany that I had that made me realize I wanted to become an artist, but I always enjoyed making things when I was a kid. And my very favorite book was a book called Make Something from Nothing. And it was by these, I don't know if you've heard, anybody's heard of this, but it was by these people from the Midwest. And they would take things like toilet paper rolls and make you know, tea cozies out of them and, you know, just sort of wacky things. And it wasn't as though I actually made a lot of the projects, but I enjoyed reading about them and the whole idea, I love the title, Make Something From Nothing. My artistic influences are kind of a mixed bag. I, I, uh, there are, you know, many visual artists whose work I have always admired and sort of aspired to the type of work that they make somehow when I was first starting out. but. I also am influenced by things like writing and um, uh, graphic design work. And, uh, you know, in terms of writing, I would have to say the work of people like Ernest Hemingway and Raymond Carver. And their, um, a friend of mine calls it uh, the declaratory imperative, where they present the facts and then it's up to the uh, viewer to interpret it. I work in lots of different media. I have done websites, um, you know, book projects, uh, video, animation, painting, and I have to say it depends on the whatever it is I'm trying to say. And then I would choose a medium that suits that best. And it's nice to have a lot of different ways to express or communicate the idea that you're trying to communicate. My work is much more um, oriented in the interior than the exterior. Um, does it reflect what's going on in the outside world? In that my experience reflects what's, what's part of the world rather than taking any particular current events and trying to make you know, some kind of art out of that. Sometimes things happen that I think, oh, this would be this is great. This goes perfectly, segs perfectly with what I'm thinking about in terms of art making. For instance, the search for weapons of mass destruction. You know, where it, it was sort of this funny, I mean, it seemed funny. It seemed almost slapstick. These people going and looking for these weapons that they never found. And, you know, as an artist, um, my uh, main interest is the notion of the search. And so I'm always looking for these, um, you know, uh, uh, experiences or events or activities that be can become metaphors. I have to say that what I've learned is that it is a process of self-discovery. You know, I think at first when I started out I was compelled to make art for some unknown reason and liked working with materials and, you know, enjoyed making objects and things, but was always very concerned with content. You know, what is my subject here? What is this about? And and I was stymied in graduate school when my, you know, the graduate faculty would come and they would want to talk to me and they'd, want me, they'd ask me, what is your work about? And I would just be sort of flustered and think I was going to give the wrong answer. And one of the main things I've learned is that it's about self-discovery and it's okay to say, I don't know. I don't have any idea what I'm doing. I hope that I just feel as though I want to do this and hopefully it will lead to something. And so I've learned that, that there's a certain amount of faith I've learned about faith, about having faith in process, and um, you know, just uh, basically, t you have to relax and accept the fact that your work is infused with content, no matter what it is. If I hold up a coffee cup and say it's art, that that means something about me, and it's not that I have to put this overlay of meaning on anything. Things just are meaningful, and so it's kind of a Zen lesson. Card from the Catalog in the Library of Congress is a card for a first edition of Moby Dick, uh, Herman Melville's classic tale of, well, tragic endeavor um, and sort of the search for this whale. And for me, I've been working with Moby Dick, with Melville's novel, for a couple of years on several different projects. Um, 
And the first was a series, uh, a project called Dickathon, which actually a lot of students in my class worked on. It was a, we took Melville's text and we animated it using techniques from film and broadcast um, TV, you know, motion graphics, and tried to um, use motion to uh, uh, interpret the content of the words. And <clears throat> I also had this idea that um, reading can be a more active experience if the words move. And people do do a lot of reading. I mean, we. We, you know, read on the web all the time. There's lots of reading on TV. If you watch CNN, there's the crawl that comes across. And my idea was that why not use the same techniques but infuse it with some more interesting content? And so that was my first project with Moby Dick. And I started with that because it was a book I had bought uh, in 1992 and um, in New York at a used bookstore. And I'm from Mystic, Connecticut, where there's a big whaling museum. And so to me, and I, so I'm, I've always been familiar with the story, but I never actually read it. And so it was this beautiful little object. And um, so I bought it, and um, that was in 1992, and I, I still haven't finished reading it because it's, it's, you know, it's archaic in his use of language. But I do enjoy reading chapters here and there. And why am I interested in this book and the whole notion of the search? And I kind of went back and thought about my past artwork and realized that you know, it has all been about this sort of search for self. And um, I think Melville's tale is a, a really nice sort of equivalent or metaphor for the artistic search.